Who, Lennox or Frankie? Frankie! Oh. Like we fed him. Well. for that. And that uh, oop. We're all over the place tonight. Bye. <coughs> Bye, honey. Cut out all that. <laughs> I was listening to Fly on the Wall, which is a podcast with David Spade and Dana Carvey, who were on SNL for years and years and years. Uh, and Dana Carvey, who did a Bush impression, George Bush. Yeah. Uh, he actually hung out with Bush hmm. several times after Bush was president. And he said 10, 15 years after his presidency, he would. He said, it was really weird that I was president. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It must be. I can, I can absolutely say that because... Do you think back in your life to like what you're doing 10, 15, 20 years ago? Yeah. And it just feels like another person lived yeah. that yeah. or another lifetime. Yeah. Like they're not your own memories in yeah. a way. And you find yourself in a role, in a position, in a life, and you're kind of like going along with it. And I imagine being president, there's so many moving parts around you and you're just kind of like, uh, I'm... <laughs> I'm trying my best here. Totally. I huge imposter syndrome, I think with Yeah. Every president, really. I bet they all feel that sort of fake it till you make it right. mindset. Right. And like like you you've been he also went into this area of like you've been aiming for this office, president. You you've been trying to be president it might be 10 years. It might be 30 years. It might be your entire life, which I don't think is actually the case in anyone's uh, uh, life. But um, you you achieve this higher office or you aim for this higher office for a decade or two or three or four. And then you achieve it. And then it goes away in four or eight years. And then you're just kind of like, oh, the that was it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's such a, it's like the peak of what you can do in right. your political career. Right. So well, the, the peak of everything, honey, you're in charge of the free freaking nation of the world of, right. of, of. So where else is there to go after that? Right. But wh why do you think anyone would want to be president? I understand that once you reach a certain level in mm. politics, that mm. is the next, like, that's the aim. Yeah. But why? What's the draw? I think it's purely just narcissism. Just, I can do this. I meant to this. I'm going to do this. Yeah. And then you get there and you're like, uh. Like ego. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I can't imagine what else would draw anyone to that yeah. responsibility and that. Right. Yes. Oh, my God. And that oop. <laughs> Aunt Flo. Hmm. Okay. So, I drive uh, for part of my job. I, I drive around. I deliver. I pick up things, much to my mom's dismay. Um, it drives her crazy that I haven't achieved more in my life and I'm sorry, mom, but I, I I'm out here just trying my best mom. Uh, but I deliver, I drive around. You uh, drive a nondescript white van. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a, I'm, what Does am it, I, a, a pedophile at the park. Honey. <laughs> Does it have a sticker on the back? That's like. If I'm breaking the law, please yeah. call this number and report me. Yeah. If I'm an asshole, please call. How's my driving? <laughs> uh, there are a few buildings that I have to go into that have 
parking garages that are gated, that are locked. So I have to pull up and uh, I, I wait for the security guard. A secure, someone has to physically hit a button to open the gate so I can enter mm-hmm. into the parking garage. And I've been doing this job for three plus years now, almost four. And when I go to a building that has a parking garage that requires a gate entrance from a security guard pressing a button, sometimes I have to honk because the security guard might be on their phone. They might be reading. They might be doing paperwork. They might be in the bathroom. They might be down the street. Mm. They might be up the stairs. But sometimes I have to honk. And it's not a big deal because they're like, oh, yeah, I'm a security guard. I have to open the gate. This person is supposed to come into the parking garage. So this is part of my job. That's a normal occurrence. Like a beep, beep, someone's here. I've never heard anything about honking my horn. Like, it's just like, hey, I'm over here. Um, And it's never been a problem. And I, I don't do it often. But once in a while, I have to honk my horn, and the gate gets opened, and life goes on. It's jolly. Are you a leaning all your weight into the horn, or are you a no. beep, beep? No, I'm one. I'm one. Oh, you're a beep? Yes, yes. And I could put all my muscle muscle into it. I'm very strong. I live tiny. You could I, break that horn if you wanted. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I just do it light- tap it might be two seconds long but it, it's 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 not a I, I try not to be obnoxious because a horn there's one tone there isn't like a subtle horn there's an a subtle car horn there's an like a hi it's me car horn is like get off your phone car horn and right. look up at the signal light there's one tone and it's, i get it it's one note yeah exactly yeah and that but I, 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 I use it sparingly, but after a few seconds, usually five-ish seconds, I, I need to get in this parking garage. <laughs> and and they, they've been understanding. They're like, oh, I'm buried elbow deep in paperwork. I'm, st- I'm staring down at paperwork. I'm filling things out. I didn't notice you. Life is grand. Thank you for... Thank you. I dem- thank you for... <laughs> Telling me to do my job. Uh, so the other day I go into a parking garage or I, I pull up to a gate, a parking garage. It's gated. And uh, a few seconds pass. I'm like, OK, well, the security guard is watching Netflix or busy doing job related duties. I, I don't know. They're nowhere in sight. Well, they they are, but it's a good three to four hundred feet oh, away, okay. and it's it's an underground parking garage, so I can't see what's going on. Okay, I know they're there. There's cars, and I have to get in there, but I I have no idea what's actually going on. But I, I wait five sec, and I I literally count out one one thousand two one thousand <laughs> because I don't want to be annoying. And I wait five seconds. I'm like, okay, well, maybe she is in another part of the parking garage handling something in the bathroom, doing paperwork. I I don't know, but I need to. She's suffering from her menstruation, much like Frankie, our cat. Oh, dear. (laughs) Uh, She's her attention is diverted. I need to get in here because I'm still in the road. I, I. I, I so I I need to get in here and just do your job, lady. <laughs> do your job. <laughs> Demand she do her job. I I need to get in, but I need her attention. I need her to hit the button. Okay, so I honk. A couple seconds later, the gate opens. I drive in. I'm like, okay, normal day, normal whatever. And then I, I'm pulling in. And I see her, and she's outside of her little uh, booth, like her little uh, tiny house or whatever, <laughs> parking, <laughs> attended tiny house. And uh, 
she's talking, but I'm like, whatever. She's saying hi. I, I don't know. I don't care. But then she's still jawing as I drive by. I'm like, oh, she wants to say something. So I roll down my window. And she goes, never honk your horn at me again. What? I was like, okay. And I, I feel like the levels are too high. Never honk your horn at me again. I'm standing three feet away from Vince the microphone. is standing up on his feet to reenact. <laughs> You're the narrator, honey. Never honk your horn at me again. And you park too close to the gate. I was like, what? I'm back. I'm I'm Vince again. <laughs> I was like, what? Honking your horn at me, beeping your horn at me, it's not cool. And you parked way too close to the gate. You gotta pull further from the gate. You can't pull up that close. What? And I thought, okay. I, I've i never had an interaction like this with her. And I've been in my job for three plus years, almost four and I don't see her every day, but I've seen I see her a lot, and we kind of I, I recognize her. She recognizes me, but I was like, okay, that is terrifying. Yeah, yeah. And so, so, okay. So there's two things going on. Don't honk, and I was too close to the gate. So on the honking thing, I I I need to get into this parking garage. I. My my job is uh, time sensitive. Right. You're I, on a schedule. Yeah. I can't sit there for six hours. So I, I need to get in here. There's no other way to grab your attention. Three to four hundred feet uh, distance. I, I have no idea what she's up to. Um, so that's that's one thing. And and my coworker, uh, James Parrott, was like, I, I'm, I'm relaying him this story. And he said... You know, the car horn should have two different honks. Like one is urgent. Like, look up at the signal light. Hurry up. Right. Uh, Attention. Emergency. 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 Woo, woo, woo. (laughs) And then there should be a second car horn that's like, hey, man. The ice cream (laughs) van coming through your neighborhood. Do, 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 do. do, Absolutely. How about you get on that Elon Musk instead of this disastrous self-driving car that's killing people? Yes. Let's work on the two-toned car honk yes. instead. Yes. I can't believe anyone hasn't thought about this. I know. It's so obvious. It is. Truly. Just one or the other. And yeah, you might hit, you might be aiming for the ice cream uh, van <laughs> tune. And then you hit the woo, 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 red alert, <laughs> red alert, nuclear war, nuclear war. But uh, so that that's one thing. The horn, I, I I can't control it. I'm sorry. It, in re in reality, I'm like, hey, I'm over here. Can you please open the gate? I need to get in here. What this- if you like leaned your head out the window and were like, yoo-hoo! <laughs> hey, lady, hello, <laughs> hello, hey, girl. So that's one thing. And then the other thing was parking too close to the gate. I've been doing this job for almost four, almost four years. Surely you know how to park at this gate. I've never heard her say anything. I've mm. never done. I, I park pretty much in the same area all the time waiting for the gate. And yes, technically she's right. If she opens the door and I'm uh, two millimeters from the freaking gate, the way it opens, it's going to hit my, my truck, my van. It, so technically she's right, but really I was a few feet away instead of being eight feet away. But I think the you horn, jerk, you jerk. <laughs> the horn triggered her into the yeah. too close argument. You know what? A loud horn can be very triggering. It can. And <laughs> again, I'm sorry that uh, the automobile uh, manufacturing. <laughs> association of whatever has it come up with two freaking horns but it's not my fault but and and going back to what i previously said this has never been a problem because the security guards letting you into parking garages no 
that you're just trying to get their attention. Oh, okay, he needs to get in here. He's supposed to be in here. Boom. I mean, yeah, you guys come here every day, around the same time every day. Yeah. It's not a surprise. Yeah. And the fact, did, did I park too close? I, no, I, I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? Unless you open the door and it's like, right into my freaking uh, fender, my front mm-hmm. bumper, my headlights. Who the hell cares, lady? Tone matters, honey. So if this had happened and I pull in and she said, hey, uh, please don't honk at me. Your horn at me. I'd been like, oh, I'm sorry. No problem. I'll never do again. <laughs> never do it again, lady. And oh, uh, you parked too close to the gate. Oh, sorry about that. But the fact that she freaking yelled at me, chewed my ass out. Yeah. Like, I was just like, what the hell's wrong with you, lady? You know, this reminds me of our beloved program, Below Deck. Yes. Which we watch every single night of our lives. (laughs) The greatest TV show of all time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so often, I think of, like, a better way that they they can communicate to each other. Yeah. Because they're always fighting, and communication is horrible. Yeah. And you know what? Communication is so important. Yeah. So just say things nicer. Yeah. Be more direct. Yeah. Be more clear. It could save so much angst and bad feelings. Just like um, be aware or, or more nuanced or just you don't have to be so blunt. Like she, she just could have said, please don't honk at me. Cool. I will never honk at you again. Yeah, she could have offered up, <clears throat> offered up a alternative, like, "Hey, could you just like lean your head out yeah, and say, yell to me, me or here's my yeah. phone number, text me when you're here, like anything but slide into my DMs." <laughs> if honking is so offensive, like, yeah. give you some alternatives of what you can do. Yeah, hello. Yeah, and please don't park so close to the gate because I I don't know what the uh, <laughs> what the what the ho- most horrible thing. Well, I mean, it, it could open up into uh, my, my van slash truck, but I, I wasn't that close. I wasn't nearly that close, but I think the honking oh, set yeah, her off. Oh, yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. And I get it, but, like, chill, lady. Yeah. So she hits me, and it was there was two stanzas to this poem, honey. There was two verses to this song. She hits me with, never honk your horn at me again. And you park too close to... I was like, okay. And then she hits me with uh, verse two. <laughs> she hits me with... Beeping your horn at me is not cool. And you need to back up because you're way too close to the gate. I was like, oh, okay. I could have argued. I could have said, well, I- I'm sorry for honking, but there's no alternative to get your attention. I, I didn't know I was parking too close to the gate, but that kind of person just she she's not having it. Like she would come up with more arguments and even more fervor. Yeah. And more anger. It could have escalated the situation. Yeah. 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 Like th- this is her domain and she gets upset at the smallest thing. And so trying to reason with her, trying to state my case it just i i knew it wouldn't go anywhere Mm, very wise of you yes i'm a wise man i also lift um (laughs) a wise strong man (laughs) i'm a wise strong man so after her tirade i just smiled at her and i said okay because i kill him with the kindness honey my mama raised me right I'm not, I'm not out here to argue over fucking parking garages and uh, car horns. I, I don't give a shit, to be perfectly blunt. Um, and if she wants to uh, go at it over this fucking minute incident in life, have your glory, lady. Like, okay, you, you win. I, I don't give a shit. This is so stupid. And it could be handled so much better, but I she she wasn't hearing it. She 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 didn't care. That this was her moment. 
to shine. And I, I was just like, oh. so I just smiled and said, okay, so she has nothing. She, she has, she had nothing in response. You have no power over me. Yeah. You handled it perfectly well, yes. by the way. That was great. Yeah. I don't know if I could have handled it so well, but that was really good how you, how you did it. Yeah. 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 And well, she didn't want to listen to reason. She just wanted to bitch. Do you and, think that she's currently on her podcast right now relaying this story from yes. her point of view? Yes. And she's like, this asshole. This asshole. <laughs> I was Honked so calm and I did this. I, I handled it so well, but he was so contentious. <laughs> <laughs> so I smiled and I said, okay. And I, I did my thing. I pulled in and delivered, dropped off, whatever. And then the next day, uh, going back to James Parrott, he was going to see her. So I said, James, you tell her that I love her. <laughs> uh, we're married, honey, and I love you. I love you to death. But I, I love this. I love this gal, too. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> she needs even. <laughs> Even after all this, you yes. love her? Yes. Kill him with kindness. I, I love you 100%, but she needs 10 to 15%. <laughs> so I said, James, you tell her I love her. You tell Sending her, all love and light. Do you tell her God loves her? <laughs> and you tell her on behalf of the men that have wronged her, <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> You take the responsibility for all of mankind. On behalf of all the men who have wronged you, girl. I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, James, because uh, because I told him, I was like, you, you might want to be prepared for this. <laughs> so let me, let me uh, tell you the tale. Uh, he said, uh, he, he just, he parked super far away from the gate. And he, he like hid <laughs> like down. comically far away because he's trying to not he yes. doesn't want the wrath yes. of this lady. He was across the street. <laughs> and and uh he said he much like much like Miley Cyrus uh when the paparazzi are surrounding a, her limo, he like laid low. He didn't <laughs> want to be recognized. He was just he hid he hid <laughs> in the back seat. He reclined his he reclined the chair ninety uh, percent. Uh, she didn't say anything. He didn't say anything. And I and I said, and I was like, well, you 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 should have defended my honor. Yeah. But he was a coward. You disrespected my boy Vince. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But he said nothing. Um, and uh, this is how bullies win. Oh, because yeah. she takes our encounter as a victory. I put him in his place. He didn't say shit back. I won. The next day, the next guy is hiding behind right. the van. Right. So she's emboldened. Uh, so, oh, <sighs> so what do you do next time you have to go there? I'm going to hide like Miley Cyrus <laughs> in her fucking limo. <laughs> we'll never talk about it again. It's... <sighs> there's... there's. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what to do with that person. And when I related this story to uh, my coworkers, everyone had a tale to tell of run-ins with her, interactions where she flipped the fuck out <gasps> over something. Oh, wow. Very minute. Hmm. Um... And uh, she has short blonde hair. Okay. okay. I'm painting a picture. Yeah. Okay. She's older gal, mm. short blonde hair. Think the security guard version of Ellen DeGeneres. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I don't know. The, some people I, I don't get. Like, well, it's not a big deal. Yeah. You're very patient and yeah. understanding. I am. So, 
I am. I you're, am, right? You're, I mean, you're you're just better than everyone. That's so true. It's really hard for you to understand these low lives. That's true. Basically. And this chick, th- this is, well, wh- whoever hurt her or however <laughs> many men hurt her, <laughs> like she takes it out on her little world, her little parking garage. Right. And... It's something. People who take things super seriously. I, I don't get. I, I don't get. I don't care. But I was on the, the brunt end of it. Yeah. You're so, so strong, honey. I am. Physically I, <laughs> and mentally. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I don't let stuff bother me. I know. I, I, uh, so that's my tale. Uh, yeah, that that's. I wish her the best. I hope she has a good weekend. Right. I, I hope she has someone in her life who loves her and yeah. gives world. her like. I hope you have a compliment. I, I don't think she has someone in her life, but I hope <laughs> she finds someone. Maybe Anne Hish. Oh wait, she died. Oh gosh. Well, I was thinking wow. Ellen. I was thinking Ellen. I'm sorry. Oh dear. Um. I hope, lady, I hope you find love. Listen to Miley Cyrus's new single, Flowers, yeah. and feel emboldened yeah. because you're a strong yeah. single female and you don't need no man. Yeah. Her big kiss off to Liam? Liam Hemsworth. Hemsworth yeah. That cheating a-hole. Yeah. So anyway, love yourself. Yeah, girl. Take yourself out dancing. Buy yourself yeah. some flowers. Yeah. Forget about these boys in these vans yeah. delivering mail too close to your gates. Okay? Yeah. Who honk their horns. Yeah. You're above that, yeah. okay? Yeah. Next next time I see her, honey, we're married, and I'm faithful to you. But can I can I give her a hug? Like, uh, it's you, okay, girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give her a pat on the back. Bring it in. Bring it in. <laughs> it's okay. I know that man hurt you. He didn't deserve you, lady. He didn't, didn't deserve you, homegirl. Alrighty. Well, that's my tale, honey. Are we done? We're done. I'm going to go cook us some yummy food because we're hungry. You're going to make some turkey. Turkey. Turkey meat? Yes. With taco seasoning. Ground turkey with taco seasoning. We have low carb tortillas. Yeah. We have salsa. We have salsa. And we're going to listen to Miley Cyrus Flowers on repeat. That song slaps, dude. It slays. Yeah. I can. Oh, oh. That's good. If you know, you know. If you don't know, Google go it. find out. <laughs> go on whatever service. You go, girl. Have. Yeah. All righty. Bye, honey. <laughs> I'm saying bye to you, but we're about to <clears throat> we're about to dine. Okay. All ball bye.